Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Mathusiasm. Today we're gonna solve this problem of four kissing circles. What I mean by kissing is that any two circles intersect each other at only one point. The radii of the three largest circles are 1cm, 2cm, and 3cm respectively. We're gonna find the radius of the green circle at the middle. To start with, we denote the centers of the three largest circles by A, B, and C. For the points of contact, we call them D, E, and F. Is there any relation between these six points? Let's check it out. Because any two circles touch each other, therefore they share the same tangents at the points of contact. They are the three red lines in the figure. Using the recent tangent perpendicular to the radius, we can say that ADB, BEC, and CFA, they are all straight lines. So we have constructed the triangle ABC. Now let's check out the lengths of the three sides. We mark down the radii of the three circles in the figure. Then AB is equal to 1 plus 2, which is 3cm, AC is 1 plus 3, which is 4cm, and BC is 2 plus 3, which is 5cm. What's so special about the lengths 3, 4, and 5? Well, probably you might notice that it's a famous right-angled triangle. Let's prove it quickly. Because AB squared plus AC squared is equal to 25, and BC squared is also equal to 25. Therefore, the sum of squares of the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the longest one. Therefore, angle BAC is equal to 90 degrees. And the reason is converse of Pythagoras' theorem. This result is a turning point of the whole question. Remember this, and we shall use it again. Now, we have nearly all the information about triangle ABC. What about the smallest circle? Let the center be O and the tiny little radius be RCM. We're gonna divide triangle ABC. By how? Let's draw the lines OA, OB, and OC. We shall use different colors to highlight them for easy reference later on. We can get their links in terms of R as well. Let's calculate them. Refer to the figure, the red side OA is equal to R plus 1CM, the green side OB is equal to R plus 2CM, and the purple side OC is equal to R plus 3CM. Now, we have all the lengths in the figure. How do we move on? In geometry, if you can't proceed with lengths only, probably you might need the angles as well. Let's use the right angle we obtained at the beginning of this video. Let's angle OAB equals to theta. We shall take a closer look to triangle OAB first. Now, we have three sides and the angle theta. What else can we do? Yes, apply the cosine formula. Cosine theta is equal to r plus 1 whole square plus 3 square minus r plus 2 whole square all over 2 times r plus 1 times 3. Expand the two perfect square terms in the numerator by the identity a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. Then we get this. Cancel out the r square term and simplify. We have 6 minus 2r over 6 times r plus 1, which is simplified to 3 minus r over 3 times r plus 1. Here, we have one equation and two unknowns r and theta. It's not enough for us to continue. What should we do? Well, we need another equation to solve it. What about using another triangle? Right, let's look at triangle OAC. Because we have proved that angle BAC is equal to 90 degrees, therefore, angle OAC is equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Likewise, we play the same trick, that is to use cosine formula in this triangle. Cosine 90 degrees minus theta is equal to r plus 1 whole square plus 4 square minus r plus 3 whole square all over 2 times r plus 1 times 4. We notice that the left hand side is special because it can be simplified to sine theta. This is essential as we can relate cosine theta and sine theta together. 
For the right hand side, we simplify the numerator as follows, which is equal to 2 minus r over 2 times r plus 1. With two equations and two unknowns r and theta, we are ready to solve for r. Remember the square identity cosine square theta plus sine square theta equals to 1? Great! We put the two expressions into the equation. Therefore, 3 minus r over 3 times r plus 1 whole square plus 2 minus r over 2 times r plus 1 whole square is equal to 1. Put the square inside each term in the brackets, then it's changed to the following. To simplify the equation, let's get rid of the denominators. We check the least common multiple, or the LCM of the two denominators. This is equal to 36 times r plus 1 whole square. So we multiply both sides of the equation by this term. It is simplified to 4 times 3 minus r whole square plus 9 times 2 minus r whole square is equal to 36 times r plus 1 whole square. What's next? Obviously, expand all the three perfect square terms. Apart from the previous identity, we shall also use this one. A minus B whole square is equal to A square minus 2AB plus B square. Then we get the following. Further expand and simplify, we have this. Now, we get a quadratic equation in R. 23R square plus 132R minus 36 is equal to 0. Up to this point, it should not be difficult to solve. We can use cross method to factorize it. Therefore, we have 23R minus 6 times R plus 6 is equal to 0. So R is equal to 6 over 23, or R is equal to negative 6, which is rejected, because the length must be positive. Therefore, the radius of the smallest circle is equal to 6 over 23 cm. But here, we have two questions. The first one is, how come we get a negative value? Is there any meaning about it? The second one is, what about the three given circles are inside a larger circle, but still, they are sort of kissing each other? What's the radius of that big circle? It turns out that we can answer all these questions at the same time. You may want to check out the answer in the next episode or other changing geometry questions in this channel. See you then!